Hello, welcome to Man in the Shed. Clearly not in the shed. In the front room today, actually. If anyone is slightly interested, it doesn't really matter if you are or aren't. I've told you now. So we're going to have a quick recap of last night's Europa Cup final between Villarreal and Manchester United. Well, the game, in fairness, it was okay. I didn't actually watch the first half. I was... Uh, at work but was listening to on the radio on the way home when Villarreal scored so I didn't actually see that goal but um second half United seemed to come into it more they deserveably you could say got an equalizer from Cavani and he's quality but for me now I'm not taking anything away from Oli's got um Oli Gunnar Solskjaer he is the manager of Man United, he's got them to second in the league. They are clearly improving. Under him, not a United fan per se, but I do appreciate that style of football to a degree. But was I the only person thinking, why well, you get some more crosses in? Why don't you put it down the wing and put some crosses in? Was that just me? They seem to be passing sideways and going backwards an awful lot. Even people like Bruno Fernandes, who people were saying that he is the most influential signing since Eric Cantona. And I can see that, you know, they both played 80 games or 81, I think it is now for Bruno. And they both scored 40 goals in there, which is impressive. But when you think 21 of those have come from the penalty spot, that is, yeah, it's it's still impressive. Not going to say it's not. But it's not well bending. But the other thing was when Eric was at Manchester United, he came into a team which went on and won the double twice. Um, and I think probably the league three times in his spell there. Um, and he was the final clog in that super team, which went on to great things. You think when he came in there, they had McClare and Shoes up front. Um, they had a fantastic back for Pallister and Bruce. And I'm going to say it was Paul Parker and Dennis Irwin, who is possibly the best left, um, best right footed left back in the history of the Premier League. Probably the best full back who can play both sides ever in the Premier League. And would probably, if he was at his peak now, easily be in the United team because he was sensational um, and then in the midfield you had the likes of Ince and um, I know it's coming to the end of his career but Brian Robson was there and they just brought in Roy Keane you know whatever happened to him um, and then they had Kinchowskis on the right and Ryan Giggs on the left and Giggs was super quick and an absolute belter of a player went on to be the most successful Premier League player of all time. Therefore, his not getting into the initial Hall of Fame is an absolute joke. doesn't matter what he's done in his personal life. The Hall of Fame is about his football career. Whether you agree with me there or not, I don't really care. For me, it should all be about what they've done on the football field. I don't care who he sleeps with. Anyway, or anything else that he's done. Anyway, let's get back to the actual match so they're comparing him to Eric Cantona like I say but you know Bruno has certainly helped improve United and he is an absolute quality player you know he wears that number 18 shirt well wow, good news people today I am going to do a second start the second series of my versus series and this one is going to be who is the greatest number 18 of all time from Manchester United and I think you could probably guess the two which I'm going to go with and we'll discuss it and we'll see if we can find a winner might already have a winner but there you go anyway so the game it ended up going to a penalty shootout and can I say the quality of the actual penalties was first class but both goalkeepers apart from the initial save at the end they didn't really like getting anywhere David De Gea, he got his hand to a couple, but 
it never looked like he was going to stop any end. That goalkeeper looked a little bit better at them, but again, he didn't really save any apart from the very final one. So they ended up with Villarreal winning the cup. Um, well done to them. They ended up seventh in that league, where United ended up um, second in theirs. So, you know, really you'd think, you know, you must have enough quality to uh, take this. You know, they, they didn't make a substitution until about the 98th minute. So in the first half of extra time, and it wasn't like they had a bad bench, you know, when you got the likes of Matto and Fred um, and Daniel James on there, you know, you've got some pretty decent players on there. Possibly they could have made changes earlier and it may have changed things. But like I say, I'm not the coach and it's not my place to say, Ollie, you needed a change. But there you go. Anyway, this has been my very quick review of the Europa Cup final. If you did watch it, I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not a United fan, if you're a Liverpool fan or Man City fan, I'm sure you enjoyed watching David De Gea finish. And also... A quick note on David De Gea. You know, he has been, over the years, United's best player for, you know, four or five years. He did have and has had a dip. But if that is his last kick for United and they sell him in the summer and Dean Henderson becomes the number one, you know, try and remember him for what an excellent goalkeeper he's been in a time when United have gone from being all conquering champions to also runners you know they're lucky sometimes to get in the top four now um, and you can blame the owners you can blame the manager you can blame the weather you can blame COVID but you know it's a fact that you know since Ferg has left David De Gea has been United's best player until they probably signed um, Fernandez. but there you go Anyway, that's been your man in the shed. See ya, pals.